Good evening, students. My name is Dr. Marian. Today we'll continue with our histology lecture. So what should you know? Uh, let's talk about the histology of the skin. So you know the skin has three layers, the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous tissue. Why am I telling you this? Because if you look at the epidermis, you can see uh, that there is no blood vessel or nerves, really. Then in the dermis, you have the blood vessel and the nerves. Then the subcutaneous tissue is mostly made up of fat. That's why um, um, when you are losing your epidermis, you don't feel pain, yes? Because you normally shed your skin. But that's not why I'm telling you this. Why am I showing you the histology of the skin? Because I need to know that the skin has the epidermis has five layers so it has the, the first layer is the stratum basale so as i said so this is this epidermis uh, yes oh let's see this is here let's see this is so the stratum basale is the it, what, what did i tell from the last lecture the basal layer is sitting on the basement membrane so as i said what do the basal cell do they um, replicate via mitosis to make new cells then the next layer is stratum spinosum the third layer is stratum granulosum. The fourth layer is stratum lucidum. And the fifth layer is stratum cornea. So cornea is the most superficial, even though, even though it's the fifth layer, is the what is the uh, superficial layer, yes. Then also, why am I telling you about layers? Because I want you to know that you have two types of skin, the thick skin and the thin skin. The thick skin are your palms and the sole of feet. Why are they called thick? Because they have a very um, developed what stratum granulosum and also a stratum cornea. Yes, but in the thin skin, you have the stratum corneum and the stratum granulosum is not that developed. Also, as your palms and so you have a thinner dermis. So what did I tell you? Uh, your dermis is made up of you know blood vessels, nerves, and your and and look at this photo also here you can see your maybe blessed the hair cells the hair follicle but you know it mostly starts in the subcutaneous tissue but let's just say mostly dermis so that's why um you see there's no you don't you won't see what um hairs there's no hair it has thin dermis and no spacious gland when you think thin skin, you can see thicker dermis, hair, and sebaceous glands. So these are the normal skin of your body, yes. Then what else you need to know? So you can see your stratum, basale, spinosum, granulosum, lucidum, and corneum. So you can see that corneum is actually one of is the biggest. You can see the granulosum. So the thick skin is a bit more than this. Um, okay, um, two cells. Let me, let me differentiate for you. Uh, keratinocytes and melanocytes. Keratinocytes are uh, they produce keratin. It's mostly for the barrier function. You know, if you water upon your you pour water upon your skin, doesn't penetrate into your your dermis. Yes, so it's a barrier function. Then melanocytes they produce the melanin. Now I asked the question. I said, why is it that we have different skin colors if we all have the same amount of melanocytes? All human beings have the same amount of melanocytes. The difference, the reason why we have different skin colors, because the rate of synthesis of melanin is different. So in a very dark person, the rate of synthesis of melanin is very high compared to a white person. So let's go back to our presentation. Now that we know the two cells, then longer has cells also in the skin. They are, um, they are, their function is immune, yes, immune function. Then uh, what else? Then the dermis, you have two parts of the dermis, the papillar, which is the first part. Then we have the reticular. What you need to know, the papilla, it has something called the, um, it gives your fingerprint. It's the, it's the reason why you have fingerprints, yes. And that's why um, if you damage, maybe you, you damage your, your palm, let's say you damage your fingerprint or your um, your fingers. It's only when it penetrates into this papillary dermis before it will disrupt your fingerprint. Then the reticular part, as I said in our last lecture, is irregular dense connective tissue. So I don't know if you look closely. This is the um, you can see this is your this is the papillary part, and this is the sorry, let's use this picture. This is the papillary dermis, yes, and this is the reticular dermis. If you look closely at this, this is the derma papillae. 
this this thermal papilla is what forms the fingerprint. Then what else you need to know? Now your skin appendages, you have the hair follicle, the sweat glands, the sebaceous glands, and the nails. So I'll just quickly, since you know your hair follicles, uh, what are the difference? The sebaceous glands secrete sebum. Yes, it's for lubrication. It's like an oil. Then do you have the eccrine sweat gland and the apocrine sweat gland? Uh, what's the difference? It mostly secretes it onto the skin surfaces. This is what is secret. Then this empty into the hair follicle, located in the armpits, groin, and nipple. And you can see about odor. Yes, but I'm not going to question you much about this. So, yes, that's all for the skin. Then the next thing we need to discuss about is. Um, okay, the adrenal gland. So let's talk about the adrenal gland because we do a lot of question on adrenal gland, but I told you that histology we are going to cover it. So you know the adrenal gland has the um, cortex and the medulla. Yes, you can see the uh, adrenal gland here. It has the cortex, the outer part, and the medulla. The cortex has three layers. The way I remember it is GFR. So we have, like, I think about the glomerular filtration rate, but you know your glomerular filtration rate is about kidneys, so don't mix it up. I just use that to remember it. So the first layer is glomerulosa. It is, it's, it's secret mineral corticoids. Then the zona fasciculata is glucocorticoids, the zona reticularis is androgen. Then the inner medulla, we have the chromophene like cell, which secret the particular means epinephrine and no epinephrine. Then what you need to know, because this is histology, yes, so you can see that glomerular, zona glomerulosa is 15%, fasciculata is 80%, and zona reticularis is 5 to 7%, so it's the smallest, yes. What's, let's go about the histology. Then in biochemistry, we'll talk about the function. Yes, good. So in zona glomerulosa, what you need to know is that um, it consists of small columnar cells, but I want you to focus on the lipid droplets as spars. Because if you come to the zona fasciculata, you can see that it has numerous lipid droplets. Why? Because they make glucocorticoids, cortisol and corticosteroin. And you can see they regulate metabolism of, of lipids, protein. And when we get to bio, um, um, this thing, you see that, you know, um, when we get to biochemis biochemistry, we'll see that all this third hormone, cholesterol, and their fat, CS. So numerous lipid droplets. Then we have the zona glomerulosa has little lipid droplets. Uh, what else you need to focus on? Then the zona reticularis. The zona reticularis, they secret androgen. They contain uh, dark acidophilic cells. And they need to focus here. They arrange in anastomosis cord separated by fenestric capillaries. Um, then let's go to the medulla. The medulla has the chromaffin like cells, they secrete the epinephrine and no epinephrine. What you need to focus on. Um, they are large pale staining cells, they are arranging ovoid cluster and short interconnecting cords. So you notice this is what anastomosing cord, why this is what short interconnecting cords. Um, what else you need to know for croc? Okay, that's all. When we start the question, MCQs, it's all going to make sense. Then now that we're done with that, let's move on to the types of capillaries. So let me see if I can make this bigger. So as you can see, we have three types of capillaries. Yes, we have the continuous capillaries, the fenestrated capillary, the sinusoid or discontinuous capillaries. Well, let's talk about it. So you can see where they are found. Fat, muscle, nervous tissue, lungs, corners, and skin. This and also here. And as you see the way they are arranged, this will be the most what the most permeable. Why right? this will be the least permeable? What do you notice? You can see the capillary, yes. I remember from my last lecture, the first lecture, that endothelia, um, um the tunica intima of blood vessel, don't worry, we'll do this, is simple squamous, yes. Then you can see it has a basement membrane that is fused, so it's not easy for substances to pass through. Then fenestrated, uh, you can see it has fenestration, so tiny, tiny um. Um, holes that allow diffusion of some certain products, but you can see that the basement membrane is still closed. Then in the sinusoid or discontinuous, you see where it is found, the liver, bone marrow, spleen, lymph node, adrenal glands. As we lecture progress, you see why it makes sense, especially the spleen and bone marrow. Keep that in mind. I'll explain it. Then you can see it has large um, intercellular gaps. What do they write? Blood cells can pass through. Yes, in this place, there's only protein that can pass through, maybe water. Okay, water can pass here, water ions, 
also water proteins yes this one to water proteins blood cells okay so you can see the larger it is the more things can pass and this is where they are found then what you need to know let's talk about the histology of the heart so you know the heart has three layers it has the um the inner endocardium the middle myocardium and the outer epicardium the endocardium is simple squamous so you should note that your um, endocardium is simple squamous epithelium but remember from the first lecture i also told you that simple squamous because in the first lecture we we're talking about all this epithelium of different structures and i'll say that simple squamous think about it like diffusion but you can ask yourself, there's no diffusion occurring in your myocardium. Yes, it's simple squamous. However, you should know that after the endocardium, there's the word, there's the myocardium and the epicardium. But in your alveoli, like, you only have the words, the just simple squamous, and there's nothing again. Yes. So here, that's why there's no like diffusion, because you still have another layer, the myocardium and the epicardium. So simple squamous epithelium, then the myocardium contains cardiac muscle fibers, and the epicardium contains what, again, smooth, I'm sorry, simple squamous or what mesothelium. I thought it's also called what mesothelium. Your um, pleura that is surrounding your lungs, your epicardium and pericardium, yes, because the pericardium is the last layer of the heart, and the pericardium will surround the whole heart. Then your peritoneum, all these are what simple squamous, also called mesothelium. Then now that we know that, what else do we need to focus on? <sighs> okay. Mm. Now that we know that, what else? Okay, let's move on. So now I'm going to differentiate four to five um, structures in the body because crop love to bring these five to confuse students. Let's start with the thymus. Now look at this picture closely. Now I want you to see that this whole thing here is called a low blue, low blues, L O B U L E S. So this one is another low blue. Lobu has a peripheral cortex and an inner medulla. Okay, it has a peripheral cortex and inner medulla. Lymph nodes. Uh, look, this is your lymph node, as you can see. Um, you can see that it has now, you can see this is the capsule, this outer part is the capsule. What do you observe? This part, okay, let me use this picture. There's a video, let's use this picture. Yes. So you can see that this green part is the capsule, and this green extending into here the trabeculae. However, this is called a lymphatic nodules or follicle. And inside you have something called the because it's called a lymphatic nodule or follicle, because inside you have this follicle. Now, if you notice that the follicle in the center part is light, it's light, it means it's so, so called a germinal center. We'll explain this as you move on. In the MCU, then you can see the medulla. Yes, so you just have what one medulla in one lymph node. Yes, but you notice that in the thymus, you have multiple medulla. That means that as the same with the lobe, you say you have one lobe, one medulla. So you can see this one also has medulla. From one lymph node, you only have one medulla. Yes, good. Then spleen. Okay, um, if you notice this picture on the spleen, I wish this image was bigger. Okay, first of all, let me tell you that I recommend you to watch this video, Spin Anatomy by Armando Usungando and Lymph Nude Anatomy by Medisna. So these two videos, but let me explain, okay? So let's go back to the spleen. I think I should have explained. Okay, I can't just start from here. Let's start from here. So what do you notice? You know your spleen has the red pop and the white pop. So what do you notice in the spleen? You can see that the spleen has, um, this is the central artery, yes. The central splenic artery and its branches, yes. What do you notice? You can see that this yellow part, you have, okay, you have the white pulp. There are two and three parts, the marginal zone, the periarterial lymphatic sheet and the follicle. So the first part will be the periarticular lymphatic sheet, yes. Periarticular lymphatic sheet. And the second part will be your what? Your marginal zone. And your lymphatic follicles, you can see, are like beside your marginal zone. Why am I telling you this? Because if you move on to this picture, you can see that your periarticular lymphatic sheet mostly contains what? T cell and macrophages. Your marginal zone mostly contains what? Macrophage. But in your periarticular sh um, sheet is mostly T cells, but they say a few macrophages, but mostly T cells. I told you what's in your periarticular lymphatic sheet. The T cell, 
in the marginal zone, mostly the B uh, macrophages and the follicles are B cells. Yes, what happens? And um, your there's an antigen. This is the antigen in the blood or your dendritic cell. Don't worry. In pathophysiology or one of these course, I'm going to talk about the way how the um, body coordinates the immune response, but it's not in histology. Yes, so the let's say. A dendritic, a dendritic cell is bringing this antigen or the, the antigen enters the body. What happens is that when you come here, because this is the first part of the T cell, remember I told you that from the last lecture you have the, the T cells. There are actually three types, the T helper cell, the cytotoxic T cell, and the T suppressor. The T helper cell does what coordinates the immune response. The T suppressor cell, will, you know, when it's to regulate the activity, yes, while the CD8 or cytotoxic T cell is for mostly what graph rejection, yes? Now, this will be the T helper cell. The antigen will come, and then this T helper cell will recognize it and say, okay, this is staphylococcus, or let's say this is coronavirus, yes? Then um, it will come here, okay? It will come, this T cell will come here, and bind or not say bind and activate this B cell. This B cell will say will be like, okay, this is the antigen and make an anti and if you recognize and can make an antibody against the antigen to convert to a plasma cell and it will secrete antibodies that will bind to this um antigen and then all your immune system can attack it. Also the macrophages can also come to present to the B cell and the same mechanism. Yes. So you you see how it works. Uh, okay, now that we know that, okay, let me talk about vaccines and memory this. So now when this, in the initial period, when coronavirus enters this person, or let's say a person takes a vaccine, this, the mechanism occurs, the B cell will be activated, they will differentiate, they will change into a plasma cell, okay, and secrete antibodies. However, there are some portion of the B cells that will be, that will, that will be, that will be called memory B cell. So the next time coronavirus enters this patient, the B cell will be like, the memory B cell will remember this pathogen. Oh, this is coronavirus. Oh, this is this person that broke my heart before, something like that. And the immune, it has, by, it will bypass all this. Because think about it, for the amount of time the T helper cell has to be talking to this B cell, the coronavirus already destroyed this patient. But the second this antigen just binds to this memory B cell, it remembers it, you just start producing the antibody. So that's how vaccine works, so that you're, the immune response is faster, quicker, more efficient. Then, okay, let's move back to this again. Then you also have the um, the red pop. So you know the white pop is 25%. Then we have the red pop. So you have something called the, um, okay, so we have at the end arteries, there's something called the called cords of bill roth. It is in between the end arteries and the venous sinus. What do I mean by that? If you look closely at this photo, if you look at this photo, let's use this upper. This is the end artery, the end artery. Then this is your venous sinus. Then the space in between here, the connective tissue here is called the cause of burial. And what happens is that you have a lot of macrophages here. Here. Why am I telling you this? Because let's say this is the what? This is the um this is the artery. This is the end artery. This is your cause of bilirubin, the connective tissue with a lot of macrophages, and this is your venous sinus. Now this venous sinus has slits. Yes, and normally when red blood cell enters this place, you can see that red blood cell can pass easily, enter the venous sinus and goes back to the splenic vein and then drains into the inferior vena cava then to get to the lung to oxygenated and it, the cycle will continue. However, if you have a pathological cell like sickle cell anemia or let's say another shape, if you notice that it will not be able to pass through this leaf, then these macrophages will engulf this cell. Why am I telling this? Because if someone has sickle cell anemia or a person has a pathology, some hemog hemog hemoglobin parties like dysfunction in the hemoglobin, and person has abnormal red blood cell, the person can present with um, splenomegaly because what will happen is a lot of red blood cell cannot pass and then a lot of macrophages will be will come to this place trying to engulf this bad and um, this, this for disfigured red blood cell. Also, the reason why I also talk about, so you can see splenomegaly. Also here, you know, there's some infections too that can cause splenomegaly. Why? Because you think about it, if you have chronic infection, infection that is chronic occurring for like six months, what happens now? There will be a lot of 
antigens being presented to these T cells, they will multiply, they will differentiate. It will also come to the B cell, they'll multiply, they'll differentiate, and a lot of cell because in what there'll be there'll be hyperplasia, hypertrophy, and that's what present as splenomegaly. Okay. Also, another fun fact to know is that the spleen stores like 30% of our platelets, yes. What, what what is this? I want you to know you have the T and B cells. So I just explained the functions, the three types of T cells. Then you know your B cell makes antibodies or immunoglobulins. Now your T cells are produced in the bone marrow. Then they migrate to the thymus to be matured. Then your B cell produce and mature in your bone marrow. So now that we know that, I've explained um, I've explained that. Let's move on to um. I've explained the lymphatic vessel, I've explained the thymus, I've explained the spleen. And you should also know that in current crop, when we talk about the spleen, there's something like a central artery. So you can see that this, the splenic artery I was talking about in this video here, um, the splenic artery I was talking about, you can see this central artery. So yes, yeah, so we talk about this. But we move on to the liver, it is what central vein. Okay. And you can see it's, it is arranged in hepatic. Um, it has a very characteristic shape. Um, look here. It's called a liver lobe. Can you see the way it is arranged? Like um, like a hexagon. I don't know if it's clear. Can you see the way it is arranged? So you have what's the central vein and um, the way it is arranged. If you look at it on the slide, it looks, look, look at this. Can you see it's like a hexagon? Yes, let's say this is one side, another side, another side. Yes, with a central vein. Just know that. Then um, what else you need to know again? Okay, the thyroid gland. What do you need to know? The thyroid gland, I told you that it makes, it, you have the thyroid gland, yes. Um, the, this is the thyroid gland. Then the parathyroid glands, you have four. The, at the back of this thyroid gland, you have one, one parathyroid gland here, another parathyroid gland here, another parathyroid gland here, and another parathyroid gland here. So what we're talking about here is, so this is a thyroid, thyroid gland. Now there's something called the follicular cell. They secrete the thyroid hormones T3 and T4. Yes. Then you have the parafollicular cell, also called what C cells. They produce what calcitonin. Then we have the parathyroid gland, which is situated at the back of the thyroid gland. One, two, three, four. It produces what parathyroid hormone. So if they crop talk about a cell that has a colloid mass. So you can see here, colloid, this is called the colloid mass, surrounded by follicular cells. It will be worth the thyroid gland. They will not detect parafollicular, it's very easy, yes. So now we know that. What else have I not talked about? Okay, the red bone marrow. Croc will not really question you much on the red bone marrow because it doesn't have any like clinical indications in the future. It's more in pathophysiology we talk about the bone marrow. But what you need to know, I'll just tell you, your bone marrow makes your red blood cell, white blood cell, platelets. Yes. Now, they will mostly focus on the erythropoiesis, which is the formation of red blood cell. What happens is that when your red blood cells are being formed, you know that your red blood cells don't have a nucleus. Remember when we were doing the histology of the first lecture, the histology of the white blood cell, most of them have nucleus, and that's how we're able to identify it. But red blood cells don't have nucleus. However, when they are being formed in their earlier stages, your red blood cell actually has a nucleus. But at the process of maturation, this nucleus will be expelled out and the macrophages will engulf it. So what happens is something called the um, erythropoietic island. What does that mean? There will be a bunch of red blood cells that are being, that's being matured. A bunch of red blood cells, then there'll be a macrophage in the center. And what happens that when this red blood cells mature and removes its nucleus, this macrophage will engulf it. Yeah. And then your red blood cell have sinusoidal capillaries. If you remember from this lecture, it's sinusoidal capillaries. And what will happen? This red blood cell, when it matures, it will pass through the slit and enter the blood vessel in the in the in the in the, in the what in the bone marrow. So you can see you have sinusoids in the bone marrow in the spleen. Why in the spleen? Because uh, remember, I also told you that there's passage of what uh, red blood cell, and so if so, if, so, if Crocs asks you, because my um, one of my teachers asked me this question that um, I don't know how she put the question, something about how um, okay, but like how how does your body know the diameter of red blood cell? So it it, it makes sense, yes. So that's why. 
um, you have these certain sort of capillaries there. Uh, what else? I think I've covered everything for today's lecture. Let's see if there's anything else to, to, to cover still. OK, so let's begin the MCQ. So in a rare bone marrow specimen, numerous capillaries are detected through their wall. Through their wall. OK, through their wall, mature blood element, mature blood element enters this blood circulation. What type of what is the type of capillaries? So of course, to be said, so because I just told you that red bone marrow. Yes, they also said there are numerous capillaries and through and through their wall, mature red blood cell enter circulation. So I was saying, the was asking me something about how does the blood body know the right red blood cell shape? It's not like the body knows that this is it. They are not going around saying, okay, you are seven diameters. No, the sinusoid capillaries, that slit is just the normal size, just enough for the normal red blood cell to pass through the sinusoid capillaries. And that's how, so if a capillary is, if a, a red blood cell is too big, um, it will not be able to pass and to be engulfed. So why am I telling you this again? Because um, there's something I wanted to say, oh my God, you just keep my mind. So that's why the answer will be uh, sinusoidal. Yes. And then the next question would be tunica intima of a blood vessel has been impregnated by argent argentic salt. As a result, the cells are rocked, twisted edges have been detected. Name this cell. Okay, oh my gosh, I think I just skipped. We, we skipped a lecture. We skipped a lecture. As I'm looking at it, I'm skipped a lecture. So let's go back. Um, let's talk about the um, I know I we skipped something. Let's talk about the um, verse to the arteries, yes. So what you need to know in croc. So you can if you look at this. So a uh, vessel has tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica adventitia. So three layers. Your tunica intima consists of endothelium. Your endothelium is what simple squamous. Same thing. Your endocardium is what simple squamous. Your alveolar cells are what simple squamous. Your lining around organs like your pericardium, your peritoneum, your pleura are what simple squamous. So you have the endothelium and the internal elastic lamina, which forms the tunica intima. Then you have the tunica media. Now, depending on the type of artery, your tunica media will be different. Then we have the adventitia, yes, which is the last part. Why am I telling you this? Because in arteries, you mostly have what the endothelia, the endothelial layer, and look here, internal elastic lamina. Okay, cycle this. Also, in the tunica media, you also have what external elastic lamina. So this one's at MCQ, you see, it will make sense. Okay, now that we know that, the tunica media, now depending on, to depend on the kind of tissue, your tunica media is different. So if it's an elastic tissue, you have more elastic fibers. If it's a muscular artery, to have more of muscular fibers and so on, yes. Or let's say smooth muscles, yes. Okay, now that we know that, let's quickly jump to the vein. So we've already talked about the type of capillaries, yes. Sinusoid, and so on. Then veins, what you need to know, the wall is thinner. Now, uh, there's something, if you look at the specimen of an artery and the vein, the vein looks more collapsed, while in an artery, it's, it retains its shape. Okay. Now, just know that, in case you want to ask that in question on a slide, the vein will collapse, while the artery shape will still be good. Now, the wall of the vein is thinner. What do you notice? That um, the tunica adventitia is thick. So Croc can say that the tunica adventitia is extending to the connective tissue, so it's thick. Now, do you notice that you didn't say anything about internal elastic lamina? Do you notice? Good. It's talking about the lymphatic capillaries. Your lymphatic capillaries will be similar to your vein. The only difference is that you have pericytes. Okay, so now we know this. Let's continue the MCQ, yes? Okay, so they say tunica intima, okay, of a vessel has been impregnated with argentinic salt. And all these things, as a result, the cells are rock, twisted edges have been detected, name this cell. You don't need to think about this. They already said the tunica intima. What cells make the tunica intima? Of course, your endothelial cell. Which other options can crop put here? Simple squamous. Next question. They said there are some tunics in the wall of blood vessel and heart. What tunic of heart corresponds to the blood vessel wall according to histogenesis and tissue structure? So, of course, to be the endocardium, because I told you endocardium is what simple squamous. Your endothelium is what simple squamous. 
Okay, so they are telling you that what, what tunic of the heart corresponds or is the same to a blood vessel? Your myocardium will consist of what? Um, cardiac cell, the contractor cell, so many kind of cell. Yes. Uh, now I'm actually quite confused why it's not epicardium or pericardium. But I think also what um, is also making it more of the endocardium is that your endocardium and your endothelium, they have the same origin. Because I think also it's according to histogenesis, like when they are being formed, it's from similar place. Yes, I think it's called the mesenchyme. Okay, but the, epica the epicardium and pericardium don't come from somewhere else. So that's why it's the endocardium and not pericardium or epicardium. Next question. In a split specimen, a blood vessel is dictated. It will consist of basic membrane with endothelium. Okay, so there's what? There's basal membrane, there's endothelium. Tunica media is absent. The adventitia is grown together with connective tissues inter layers of this plane. What vessel it is? Of course, first of all, it's not arterial. Okay. It's not vein of muscular type, of poor development of muscular elements. You don't have anything such as this in your body. If it was artery, they'll talk about what internal elastic lamina. Do you say anything about internal elastic lamina? No. Artery too. Anything in artery, they have to be internal elastic lamina. So of course, you're left with vein of or muscular type. Why? Because they said your tunical media is absent. As when they said your tunical media consists of muscular fibers, it will have been what vein of the muscular type. Okay. I don't know what they mean with poor development of muscular elements. Vein of muscular type is supposed to have good muscular elements. Do you get so? I don't get what this question means. So that's why it's with vein of muscular type. Experimentally, into the organism of a lab animal, thymosin antibodies have been introduced. Differentiation of what cell is affected most of all. Of course, what is a thymosin antibodies have been introduced. Differentiation of what cell be affected most of all. So they said they introduced it where? They didn't specify where they introduced it to. So the answer is still in full sight. Let's see. Let me see the other options. So it's still lymphocyte. Okay, I think I skipped something in the lecture. I told you that here, your lymph node, I explained to you about this. Um, I told you that, okay, there's something I didn't tell you. So it's also another lecture I missed. There's something else I didn't tell you. Mm, let me find where I wrote it down. So I, I talked about the fact that I explained about your uh, spleen. I talked about the cells you can find. Also, what I forgot to tell you is that, okay, in your in your lymph nodes, in your medulla, you mostly have T lymphocytes. In the follicle side, especially in the germinal um, center, you have, or germinal follicle, you have B lymphocytes, okay? However, in your thymus, what did I tell you matures in the thymus? T lymphocytes. So what do you think you have in your thymus? T lymphocytes. So in this question, they said that they introduced thymosin antibodies, so antibodies to thyroid maybe receptor, receptor in the thyroid gland, in the, well, sorry, in the in the th th sorry thymosin, so in the thy thymus, yes, in thymus. I was thinking not thyroid, thymus. Please don't make mistake, because remember in the thyroid gland, I told you thyroid gland what when I showed you the study of thyroid gland has what. Colloid, follicular cell, and parafollicular cell. Please don't make that mistake. So you said they introduced thymosin, so thymus. What cell will be affected first of all? So of course it will be T lymphocytes because what cells are in your thymus? T lymphocytes. In a histological specimen, an organ parenchyma is replaced by lymphoid tissue, which forms what? Lymph nodules. Lymphoid. They say which, which forms what? Lymph nodules. Okay. Then I said, these nodules are diffusely arranged and have a word central artery. What organ is this? Of course, it's plain. If they said central vein, okay, they will not talk about lymph nodules, okay? But if they said that describing something of central vein, to the word liver. If they didn't say anything about central artery, I'm talking about lymph nodules on its own. So I mean, what lymph node? If they say lymphatic uh, follicles here, um...
if they say lymphatic follicles or lymphatic lobules, wait, sorry, again, central arteries was spleen, okay, central vein, liver, lymph nodules or lymph follicles is what lymph node, but lymphatic lobules is what thymus. Again, central arteries most to spleen, central vein, liver, lymph nodules or lymph follicles is what lymph node. Lymphoid um, lobules, L O B U L E S, is what thymus. Okay, good. So that's why that's how we spleen. A patient with seven years history of hypothyroidism has thyroid hormone def de deficiency detected. What cell of adeno hypophysis or pituitary gland? A change, so of course, we want thyroid topocyte because person is this. Um, these are cells of the thyroid of the thyroid gland, so the person cannot make um, uh, thyroid hormones. So that's why the person has hypothyroidism. Okay, that's why it's to be thyroid topocytes. The removal of what endocrine gland causes pubertal precox of experimental animals. So I think what you're talking about here, this pubertal precox means when uh, uh, someone um develops earlier okay when someone reaches poverty early so um the exact mechanism yet has not been understood there are certain experimental needs but however the epiphysis which is also called what the pineal gland it has been shown that when they remove this epiphysis this person reaches puberty earlier so that's why the answer will be epiphysis okay but the exact mechanism is not known in a histological specimen the adrenal than cortical substance, one can see small polygonal cell forming round clusters and containing what small quantity of lipidic inclusion. What part of adrenal gland is shown? Of course, not granulosa. The same thing in a specimen of adrenal gland, one can see large cell of cubic form located in the form of cords, which contains a lot of lipid inclusions. What part of adrenal gland is represented in this? So I don't want you to run and say, oh my gosh, they said a lot of lipids. So you are thinking, wait, yes, a lot of lipid inclusion. So it's be what GFR. Um, G is goma glomerulosa, F is fasciculata, and the last one is reticulari. So lipid inclusion from this um presentation I showed you here. Yes, you can see that. Let's make this big again. The zona glomerulosa, you can see it has what um, lipid droplets are sparse. While in the fasciculata, it has numerous lipid droplets. While here, you have what mostly abundant dark acidophilic cells, anastomosing cords, fenestrial capillaries. Yes. So that's why the answer will be what will be zona fasciculata because of a lot of lipid inclusions. The electromicrography of the myocardium shows cells of genetic form containing a few organelles. But with a well developed granular endoplasmic reticulum and secretory granules. What is this cell? That's a question you don't need to overthink. They already told you well developed granular endoplasmic reticulum and secretory granules. What are these cells? Of course, it has to be the secretory cardiac myocyte because of the secretory granules. Your, piece, your pacemaker cell is what you know will set the pace of the heart for the contraction. You know, we talked about this. So they don't secret anything, yes? There's something that will just make sense. Your ventricular. Cardiac access for contraction, of course, good. Cells of his fiber to also conduct impulse. They don't secrete anything. So by method of elimination, I let me secrete cardiac cells. In the histological specimen of a blood vessel that is OCIN, they have been detected from 40 to 60 elastic penetrated membrane in the tunica media named this blood vessel. So of course, they didn't tell you that there's an Elastic lamina, but what do they what do you notice? It's 40 to 60 elastic penetrated membranes. Which of these options have elastic um, in it? Of course, it's just one. That's why I answer the artery of the elastic type. Okay. If it's mixed, we both we both elastic and smooth. Okay, don't worry, as we move on, you see how the answers are. Large quantity of exudate has been detected in the pericardial cavity of a patient with exudative pericarditis. Functional activity disorder of what cell causes what is of the pericardium? What did I tell you? Are the is the epithelium of the pericardium, simple squamous, also called what mesothelium. So they say what cells, so mesothelial sites. 
In a, in a histological specimen, one can see blood vessels with a wall. Okay, the blood vessel with a wall formed of endothelium, basal membrane, and loose connective tissue. What is this? So, of course, it cannot be any artery. So, it's between veins. So, it's between vein and vein muscular type because they didn't tell you anything about tunica media. They didn't tell you anything about a lot of, of muscular tissues in the tunica media. So, that's why it's the vein of your muscular type. An organ of cardiovascular system is built on cells connected with the help of intercalated disc. What organ is this? Okay, I didn't explain this to you, but I'm sure if you're in Tedium, I've heard about the intercalated discs. You know that it's only found in one place. What place is that? The heart is for what, what contraction. Yes. It says arterioles are playing an important role in supplying functional. Okay, arterioles play an important role in supplying the functional units of organs with blood. What arterial structure performs this function? And I remember in the last lecture, I skipped the arterial work, so I'm not explaining this question. Your arterioles um, contains, there's the, they contain the endothelium, then you have myocytes or muscular cells. Now, what happens is that these arterioles, they, um, no, let me show you, let me show you a picture. There's no way you understand it. Let me show you a picture. So, capillary bed. So, the question says something that they regulate. It's not very really regular. They say the words they play an they, important role in the supplying function of an organ with blood. So you can see like they're playing a role in supplying the organ with blood. Why are they talking about this? Because if you look at this picture I'm about to show you, mm -hmm. I'm not for the one that is labeled. Why the blood moving it? So what do you see? This is um your arterials. Yes, this is your arterials. What do you see here in these arterioles here? This is also your arterial, now so called meta arterial. That is, this whole thing is arterial. What do you see? Sphincters. So these sphincters, they contain what they are, they contract. So they have to contain myocytes, which is muscle cells to contract. Yes, smooth muscle cells. Okay, smooth muscle cells. So there's no what situations. You have mass best texture, smooth muscle cells. Okay, same thing as muscular cells, but they are muscular cells, but which type? Smooth muscle cells. Yes. Now, when they contract, they tighten, blood will not be able to move. When they relax, blood will be able to move. So that's how they control what they, they, they supply the organ with blood. So that's why it's myocytes. Okay, it makes sense. Good. Also, they can remove myocytes and put what smooth muscle cell. You see? Good. In a surgical specimen, one can see an organ of cardiovascular system. One of its membranes is formed of anastomosis fiber. They are a form of cell connected with the help of what intercalated disc, so it will be what heart. There's no organ that has intercalated disc. So if you see anything about intercalated disc, it's heart. A capillary is characterized by penetrated epithelium. Okay, there's what penetrated epithelium with porous basic membrane or porous basal membrane. If you look at this picture that I showed you here, this if you what is it between your continuous and penetrated capillaries, both. Both of them have, is will I say a smooth or will I say complete basement membrane? There's no what the basement membrane is complete. But the only difference is that this one has penetration. So can you start to pass. But your sinus or capillary also called this continuous capillary incomplete basic membrane. Okay, I told you what basic continuous capillary. It has another name. Let me quickly check it for you. Continuous capillary. Where did it take like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Thank you very much.